Hello and welcome back Cosmic Explorers, I'm Jason and today I'd like to tackle a question that's almost impossible for our small human brains to actually visualize. Just how big is our home galaxy? So get ready to have your mind blown as we zoom out from the cozy little corner of the cosmos in our little solar system to the mind-boggling expanse of the Milky Way galaxy. We'll be measuring distances in light years, traveling through star clusters, and even peeking at our own little galactic neighbors. So strap in, prepare for launch, so to speak, as we get ready to go. So first, in order to get our brains wrapped around the scale here, we need to start small. And when I say small, I'm talking in cosmic terms, with our own little solar system here, which is pretty small on these scales. From the Sun to Neptune, the farthest planet in the solar system, I'm still very sorry for Pluto, you're technically not a planet, I'm still salty about that. That distance from the Sun to Neptune spans about 5.6 billion, with a B, kilometers, or what we call 30 astronomical units. By the way, an astronomical unit is the distance from the Earth to the Sun, so 30 astronomical units, or 30 AUs, is 30 times that distance. So that sounds pretty big, right? Well, in galactic terms, that is barely a speck of dust. In fact, our entire solar system is just about what we call 0.0. 000775 light years across. I want you to try to remember that number because it's going to seem very tiny very, very soon, even though we think our solar system is a pretty big place. So let's take our first big leap and let's look at the distance from our sun to the nearest stellar neighbor, the nearest star, which is called Proxima Centauri. Now this is a red dwarf star. It sits at a whopping 4.2 light years away from our solar system. That means that light traveling at the almost inconceivable pace of 299,792 kilometers per second, even at that pace, it takes 4.2 years for a beam of light to come from Proxima Centauri to us. So to put that into perspective, if our solar system were the size of a tiny little quarter, then Proxima Centauri would be about 430 kilometers away, or about 267 miles away. Now believe me, even as an astronomy buff, it's real easy for us to read these numbers and just kind of move on. You need to let these numbers sink in a little bit. Just try to conceive of them, because it's really difficult. All right, so the speed of light is inconceivably fast to us. However fast you think it is, it's much faster than that. It's faster than what I can conceive as well. So the best metric I have to get you to understand the speed of light is try to conceive of the size of our planet, Earth, and try to imagine flying all the way around the Earth, around the equator, all the way around one time. Now, try to imagine going around the Earth, not one time, but seven times. So one time, two times, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times around the planet. A light beam, or a photon, can travel seven times around the entire planet in one second. That is how fast a beam of light is. So one second, two seconds, three seconds. There's seven more times around the Earth, seven more times around the Earth, seven more times, seven more times. That is inconceivably fast for me to picture. Now, that is a pretty blistering pace, right? Well, the nearest star, Proxima Centauri, we just said, is over four light years away. So even at that incredible speed, it would take a photon over four years to make the journey from Proxima Centauri all the way back here to our solar system. Now, we're just getting into this, but I want to kind of cement our understanding a little bit. When I was younger, we learned about the, at that time, nine planets all the way to Pluto. Uh, and now we really call Neptune the last major planet. Pluto and some others are called dwarf planets way out in the distant reaches, right? Well, we kind of thought of the solar system as more or less ending at Pluto. At Pluto or at Neptune, wherever you want to call the boundary, we said the solar system was, was basically done. But now we know that way beyond the outer edges of Neptune and Pluto is something called the Oort cloud. And it's basically an inconceivably large uh, area where icy fragments and remnants from the 
early parts of the solar system are hanging out and occasionally they get tugged and they come into the inner solar system. Well, that Oort cloud extends about halfway to the nearest star, Proxima Centauri. So when I was a little, we were taught that the solar system kind of ends, the influence of the gravity of the sun kind of ends out at Pluto somewhere. But now we know that our solar system really extends almost two light years away from us. So Proxima Centauri, four light years away, about halfway, about two light years away is the outer edges of what this Oort cloud is. And everything in that Oort cloud is gravitationally bound more to our sun than to any other star or anything else out there, gently orbiting very, very slowly. And you also have to think about it being so far away that it's totally dark there. You see stars, you don't have a, a bright disk of a sun, it's kind of just dead objects out there that are just left over from the early parts of our universe and our solar system halfway to the nearest star. That's about as far as our solar system actually extends according to modern knowledge. But we're just getting warmed up because we have to go beyond our little solar system neighborhood. So we have to talk about this whole distant scale thing. Let's zoom out a little bit more and look at some local star clusters far beyond the influence of our tiny little sun. So our sun is actually part of a loose, irregularly shaped grouping of stars called the local interstellar cloud. It's also called the local fluff. And no, I'm not kidding, that's actually what it's called. The local fluff is about 30 light years across. So if your scale is calibrated to uh, Proxima Centauri being four light years away, 30 light years is about the size of this grouping of stars here. Now to expand our view further, we encounter the what's called local bubble, a vast, largely empty region of space, about 300 light years in diameter. The local bubble is surrounded by a shell of dense gas containing many bright young stars. So now we're at the scale on the order of hundreds of light years away. At that distance, you don't see a sphere of a yellow sun. You don't see the orbits of our planets. Everything is very, very far away. You are very, very far detached from our solar system, but still in our sort of local area, so to speak. Now let's continue to zoom out. We start to see the structure of our galaxy spiral arms. So our solar system actually sits in what's called the Orion arm of our galaxy, also called the local arm, which is actually a minor spiral arm of the Milky Way galaxy. Now this arm where we live is about 3,500 light years across, 3,500 light years across. And for comparison, the major arms of our galaxy, like the Perseus arm or the Sagittarius arm can be up to 10,000 light years across. So we actually live in a minor arm, kind of a smaller part extending off of the main part of our galaxy. And now, drum roll please for the main event, the full size of our Milky Way galaxy. Brace yourself because no matter who you are, it's impossible for you to actually comprehend the size of these numbers we're about to talk about. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, is approximately 100 thousand light years in diameter, 100,000 light years. Now that's a distance so vast that if you could travel at the speed of light, it would take you 100,000 years to cross from one edge, one side of our Milky Way all the way to the other. Now, the Milky Way is about a thousand light years in thickness uh, toward the edges of the galaxy, but at the bulge at the center, it bulges to about 30,000 light years in thickness at the center. All right, now, just like before, let's not gloss over this. Let's take a second and try to put it in perspective for our tiny little human brains, right? With a little bit of time travel. Imagine that we set out on a journey across our galaxy. It's about 100,000 light years across. We start our journey 100,000 years ago, traveling from one edge of the galaxy at the speed of light, going all the way across to the other side. We would be arriving at the other side of the Milky Way right about now if we started our trip 100,000 years ago at the speed of light. But what was actually happening on Earth when our hypothetical journey began? Well, let's think about it for a minute. We know that about 100,000 years ago, our planet was in the grip of an ice age. Homo sapiens, that's us, had evolved, but they were still confined to Africa. Now, Neanderthals roamed around across Europe and Asia, and our ancestors were busy developing complex social structures, creating art, and using increasingly sophisticated stone tools. 
And even though these people lived long ago, they were very, very similar to us, and they were very quite likely gazing up at the night sky just as we do every night, but they had absolutely no concept of the vast galaxy that they were a part of. And in the time it would take light to cross from one side of the galaxy to the others, humans went from cave paintings to space stations, from stone tools all the way to smartphones and computers in that time period. Now, if humans could just master how to actually get the last bit of toothpaste out of the tube, our species would have really accomplished something, in my humble opinion. So now that we've grasped, or at least we've tried to grasp, the sheer scale of our galaxy, let's take a minute and talk about the shape and how it compares with other galaxies out there. Of course, most of us want to know, is our galaxy special? Is it somehow different from everything else out there? So actually, as we gaze up at the sky with bigger and bigger telescopes, we now know that galaxies come in several main types. We have the spiral galaxies. We have the elliptical galaxies. We have what we call irregular galaxies. And our Milky Way galaxy is actually a spiral galaxy. Specifically, it's a barred spiral galaxy. And all this means is that it has a central bar-shaped structure composed of stars with spiral arms extending from the ends of the bar. The spiral arms are actually where most of the galaxy's gas, dust, and young stars are found. But the big question is, is our galaxy special in terms of its size or its shape? Well, it's certainly impressive, but it's not unique. The Milky Way galaxy is considered a large spiral galaxy, but it's not the largest known. The title of the largest spiral galaxy known goes to the recently discovered Alcyonius, a radio galaxy about 16.3 million light years across. That's about 160 times wider than our galaxy, the Milky Way. To be clear, there were jets of plasma emanating from the central black hole in the center of that galaxy, the largest and the longest jets of plasma ever detected and seen. So by that metric, it is the largest galaxy known, but it's not exactly something we could just walk over to and study, so we don't actually know the real size of that galaxy, but whatever it is, it's enormous. Now, in terms of the number of stars, our galaxy is estimated to contain somewhere between 100 and 400 billion, that's billion with a B, stars. Now, that's a lot of suns, but again, this is impressive. Of course, it's a big number, but it's not the most star-rich galaxy we've ever seen. Some giant elliptical galaxies like M87 are estimated to contain somewhere over a trillion stars. All right, so our galaxy is big and impressive, but certainly nowhere near the biggest or the most impressive galaxy. Let's take a second and zoom out even further and see where our galaxy fits in the grand cosmic neighborhood. So the Milky Way is part of what's called the local group, which is a collection of more than 54 galaxies spanning about 10 million, with an M, million light years. Now, the local group of galaxies is dominated by two large spiral galaxies. Our Milky Way galaxy is one of them, and the other is a galaxy you may have heard of called the Andromeda Galaxy. Now, speaking of the Andromeda Galaxy, let's compare it to our home galaxy, just for giggles. Andromeda is actually larger than the Milky Way Galaxy, with a diameter of about 220 thousand light years compared to our galaxy at about a hundred thousand light years. It's also more massive, containing perhaps as many as about a trillion stars, the exact number is difficult to calculate and observe, compared to our galaxy, which is somewhere on the order of a hundred to four hundred billion stars or so. Now, interestingly, Andromeda and the Milky Way galaxy are on a collision course with each other. Don't panic, though. This cosmic fender bender won't happen for about four and a half billion years. And when it does occur, it will be less of a collision and more of a gradual merging of these galaxies, as the vast distance between stars mean that actual stellar collisions between two different stars will be very, very rare. The result will be a new, larger elliptical galaxy that some astronomers have actually dubbed Milkomedia, which is obviously some kind of contraction of Milky Way and Andromeda. Or I guess it would make more sense to call it Milkomeda Galaxy. 
The evidence for this future collision comes from careful measurements of Andromeda's motion relative to the Milky Way, which we can figure out by looking at the light coming from the galaxy. Using the Hubble Space Telescope, astronomers have determined that Andromeda is moving toward our galaxy at about 110 kilometers per second. Now that's not that fast, but over billions of years, this motion will bring the two galaxies together in a cosmic dance that will surely be impressive to watch, but will dramatically shape our night sky. Now let's zoom out even further. We find that the local group is just a small part of what's called the Virgo Supercluster. Now this is a collection of galaxy groups and clusters that span approximately 110 million light years. And even this supercluster is just one of millions in the observable universe. When you start to get to the scale, I mean, it's impressive to talk about, but it's just impossible to actually fathom. However big any of us think the universe is, it's way bigger than that. Now, the largest known structure in the universe is called the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall. Now, that's a group of galaxy clusters, not galaxies, a group of galaxy clusters that spans an incredible 10 billion, with a B, light years. Now, at this scale, even our vast Milky Way galaxy just becomes a tiny point of light in an unimaginably large cosmos. Now, it's worth noting that when we talk about the observable universe, what we're really referring to is the part of the universe that we can actually see from the Earth. The actual universe might be much larger or even infinite. We simply have no idea because we can't see beyond the cosmic horizon set by the speed of light and the age of the universe. And because the speed of light is finite, we can only see so far into the distance. So there you have it, cosmic explorers. We've journeyed from our tiny solar system a mere 0.000775 light years across to the vast expanse of our 100,000 light year wide galaxy. We've seen just how impressive our Milky Way is and how it fits into the local group, the Virgo supercluster and structures beyond. So the next time you walk outside on a cool winter night and you look up at the night sky, I really want you to remember that you're gazing up at a tiny fraction of our home galaxy. And each point of light represents a sun, potentially with its own family of planets, potentially with life forms on some of those planets, all part of a vast cosmic city that we call the Milky Way. And that the Milky Way in turn is part of a much larger structure of galaxy clusters. Now, our galaxy may not be the biggest, and it may not be the most populous, and it may not be the most impressive in the universe, but it is special because it's where I live and it's where you live. I know it sounds corny, but it's special because we're here, right? It's where we evolved. It's where we've looked up at the stars and we've wondered about our place in the universe and how it all came about. I'm Jason, signing off and thanking you for hanging out with me and having this literally awesome discussion with me. Remember that on the grand cosmic scale, we might be small, but our capacity for wonder is limitless. So please drop me a comment on the video. Please let me know what you think. Keep looking up to the stars and always remember to stay curious. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.